Hello everyone, Miss Smith here. Right now we're going to read Horrible Ordeal. We're going to annotate and then we're going to answer the question at the end. Um, so you guys have two multiple choice questions that I am not going to go over with you. Not yet at least. And then um, we're going to do this Pez question together. And I want to let you know, there is really no such thing as a Pez question. Um, it's really, Pez is the strategy that you use to answer questions. So we're going to go over that strategy because you're going to be using it a lot. Not only in my class, um, but in your future English classes here with Canton City. And then also, it's also a really great writing strategy. Like, um, if you're ever answering a question that has to be a paragraph long, this is how you can do it. It's really simple. You just follow the, uh, follow the steps and you'll be there in no time. So let's get into it. This is Horrible Ordeal by Aaron Ralston. We are going to click that pencil in the top right corner. So this thing says, reminder, annotations answer questions like who, what, when, where. They might also answer, or they might also contain connections to your own experiences. Whoops, just put a line in right there. Oops, <laughs> undo, undo. Okay, so the background. If you ever think you're having a few bad days, Take a minute to remember Aaron Ralston's 127 hours of hell. Oh, in 2003, Ralston went hiking near Robber's Roost in Utah in what should have been an uneventful journey. He was an avid climber and hiker used to far more treacherous terrain. But then, near Blue John Canyon, Ralston slipped and a boulder became dislodged. The 800-pound boulder trapped his right arm, pinning it to the wall of a deep, narrow canyon. He tried to dislodge and chip away at it, but after a day or so, realized that this was impossible. What he would have to do was far more extreme. Oh, boy. Okay, well, this paragraph tells me a lot. It tells me the who. Aaron Ralston tells me um, 127 hours, kind of like when. Robber's Roost in Utah in 2003. Uh, near Blue John Canyon, 800-pound boulder trapped his right arm. Okay, so with this, we're already told a lot. We're told who, what, when, and where. Oops, okay. And where. Okay, a desperate idea. Let's get into that one. A desperate idea, he told an interviewer the following information. I had to decide between life and death. I realized early on that I was going to have to cut off my arm to get free, but there was also resistance. I didn't want to. But by the second day, I was already imagining how I could do it. I tried to cut into the arm like a saw, then realized that the knife was too dull to get through the bone. Oh my god, that's gross. Then despair was followed by a kind of peace, a realization that I was going to die. But I wasn't going to go out without a fight. I decided to see it through to the end. Okay, that is awesome. Okay, I just really want to highlight that last one that like made my that like gave me goosebumps. This guy has some perseverance. He is a fighter. Has perseverance. Perseverance. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, next one, his will to live. Finally, Ralston discovered that although his knife couldn't cut through his arm bone, he could bend the arm and use the boulder to break it free, or to break it freeing himself. Ralston managed to use his body weight to violently bend his arm until the boulder snapped his forearm. He then, ooh, what the, what the, Okay, he then ingeniously used the attachment from his hydration pack, a bendy rubber hose that you use to suck water out of the pack, as a makeshift tourniquet, and began sawing and cutting through the remaining cartilage, skin, and tendons with his multi-tool. The amputation took more than an hour, and this was after five and a half days of agony. Okay, amputation took more than an hour. Ooh, that had to be one gruesome hour. Um, but it was already after five and a half days of agony. Okay, but also I want to point out that he is very much aware of his surroundings. So where is it? He used the boulder 
to break his arm freeing himself okay but then he's also very aware of the tools that he has and different ways that he can use them attachment from his hydration pack a bendy rubber hose okay so over here i'm going to write awareness of surroundings and tools to use in different ways okay stop make sure you annotate the above paragraphs we have done that Ugh. okay it's a little bit up here okay uh, life after survival despite his horrible ordeal Ralston survived he even helped producers make a film based on his experience called 127 hours Today, he continues to do challenging outdoor sports, helps disabled hikers, and works for wilderness preserva preservation. In 2009, he married, and the following year, his son, Leo, was born. That is awesome. Okay, so this paragraph is really just telling me about his recovery and life after. the um, incident okay so like I said you guys are going to answer those questions yourself these two but we are going to answer this question together okay so the question is in 10 years where will Aaron Ralston look back on his mountain experience as being positive or negative Okay, so this is really um, an opinion piece question. So this, it, it really has to do with what I personally believe. So that's how I'm going to start the sentence off. I'm going to say, I'm actually going to write this on the lines. I believe um, Ralston, Ralston, will look back on his mountain experience as being positive that is what I personally believe you guys can go with negative if you can find the evidence to back it up so that P the point was just restating the question make a short clear point so that's my point I believe Ralston will look back on his mountain experience as being positive all right now evidence give quoted material directly from the text to prove your point so why do you think that? What from the text made you think, what from the text made me think that his experience is going to be positive? Well, I remember back in this last page, the life after survival, he's still doing this stuff. He's still going out there and living and doing challenging outdoor sports. Like he, he's still doing it. So if it was that traumatizing, if it was that negative, he would probably discontinue to do this kind of stuff. So that's what I'm going to put for my evidence. I'm going to give quoted material directly from the text to help prove my point. So um, let's start this off with um, in the explanation... of his life after the incident um, readers are told comma, and now I'm going to put this quote in. Now, what does the quote say exactly? It says, today he continued to do challenging outdoor sports. 
can highlight this so I know where to go. Helps disabled hikers and works for wilderness preservation. Okay, so that's the quote I'm going to put in there. So to, ooh, it's not what I want, back. Today, whoa, there's an extra. Back, back, back. Today, he continues to do challenging outdoor sports. Okay, I have to get this quote down exactly. So let's go back and see what was said. Challenging outdoor sports, helps disabled hikers, and works for wilderness preservation. Helps disabled hikers and works for wilderness preservation. Okay, end quote. Now, let's go on to summary. Work backwards by summarizing the evidence in your own words and connecting it back to your point. Okay, so I kind of said this already, but not, I haven't written it. I only just said it. So I'm going to use that evidence and I'm going to tie it back to my point using this evidence and tying it back to my point, basically summarizing why that point is what it is. So we'll start with Ralston's experience could not have been that negative. that negative if he is continuing to do actually let's say if he's continuing to oops, put himself into the same danger or the same dangerous setting comma lifestyle he's living Okay. Rawson's experience could not have been that negative if he's continuing to put himself into the same dangerous setting slash lifestyle he's been living. Okay. Um, he's still, ex let's say he's still exposing himself to the possibility of danger. And I think that'll do. He's still exposing himself. to the of danger. Oops. Danger. Ha. I laugh at the face of danger. Okay. So this works. So what I'm going to do is now read it all together 
And this itself could be a paragraph. If you were writing this in a paper, if you had to prove a point in a paper, what I just wrote could make up one whole paragraph. So, I believe Ralston will look back on his mountain experience as being positive. In the explanation of his life after the incident, readers are told, today he continues to do challenging outdoor sports, helps disabled hikers, and works for wilderness preservation. Ralston's experience could not have been that negative if he's continuing to put himself into the same dangerous setting and lifestyle he's been living. He's still exposing himself to the possibility of danger. All right, that looks good to me. Um, so in general, this point, you should have like one sentence. Evidence could be one or two, but make sure you're putting in this, this part it's like kind of like a preface to your to your quote. You kind of have to introduce your quote. You can't just plop you can't just plop your quote right on in there. Like you have to have some kind of preface to it. The preface is what's in green. Okay? And then you put the quote. And then the summary um this should be two or three sentences. Okay, there you have it, folks. We answered a question using the PEZ strategy. Okay, I hope you take this on and use it in your next reading, which is flight. It's actually the exact same question, too, but it's a different experience that the person in flight is having. All right, there you go.